Hello everyone. So today I'm here with a guest speaker. This is my roommate Maddie. Hello. Today we wanted to come and film a quick video about picking a roommate, which I know most of you guys, if you're in the current senior class, class of 2022 graduating high school, you guys are probably in the stage of picking a roommate to go to college next year. And if you're a future generation, congratulations, you're probably almost going to college. That's super exciting. So we wanted to come on and film a video about things you should consider when picking a roommate and how to find a roommate, how to pick one. I would say that me and Maddie have had a very successful roommate relationship and we want to be able to share with you some of the things that we discussed. Some things were things that are college recommended we talk about and a lot of other things were things that we took to, I guess, the next level in terms of having those like more difficult conversations and figuring out what we really needed from each other so yeah without further ado we're just gonna hop in and discuss some things first up would be academics and extracurriculars so I don't know about you Maddie but for me I definitely was looking for someone who had a different major than myself and my reasoning was that I didn't want to like end up in like a bubble in my freshman year but what were your thoughts going in yeah I think I preferred someone who had a pretty different major than I did not super super different where you're like living in a completely different world like at least at Northwestern it's a very different thing to be like a music or a theater major than it is to be even like a journalism or science stem kind of thing I wanted to be able to have like these interconnected relationships but it I didn't want them to be this exact same. For reference so as most of you guys know I'm a journalism major and Maddie is? I'm a cognitive science major. Yes, and for me, I was actually interested in cognitive science as well, so I like science, but I chose not to major in it, so it's really exciting that my roommate is studying something that I find interesting. We don't really talk about academics that much, but I think occasionally we'll like fill each other in on what's going on, or I found that sometimes I will need Maddie's help in doing a journalism project and or she will need my help in doing like a science project, yeah. so it's good that we can like bounce off of each other for okay. sure. Moving into extracurriculars. so. My big extracurriculars, I guess, are I play club lacrosse here and I, I was gonna say I dance. No, I don't, you dance. <laughs> <laughs> and I am a power lifter, so I go to the gym a lot. Thoughts on this one? Yeah, I do a lot of dancing outside of like academics, which is really good for me. I mean, it gives you a lot of time like in the room. I think it's good to have things that get you out of the room at the same time. Like if we did both didn't do anything and we were sitting in the room the whole day, I don't yeah. think we'd get along <laughs> as well as yeah. we do. Um, but it also makes you have these other friendships. It's really fun to bring you into dance things. It's so fun when you like come to a dance show or something like that. We also are both very like into fitness, but we have, yeah. it's kind of fun because we have different, different realms of it. Interests. Like yeah. dance is my fitness, but you have like, your own thing and it is fun to like talk about too. As some of you guys may know, I used to dance like when growing up, I don't dance anymore, but I most certainly appreciate dance and enjoy it. And I feel that your roommate should definitely be like someone who you're super close to, someone that you love and want to support. So I love going to Maddie's dance shows. I think it's super, super fun. Definitely thought it was great that we had a lot of aligning interests, even if they weren't exactly the same stuff that both of us were like moderately interested in so that we could support each other. Okay, so if you are going to a school which has a Greek life presence, I know at Northwestern our Greek life presence isn't huge, but it definitely does exist. Something that we discussed over the summer was um, Greek life. So I currently am in a sorority, but my roommate is not. As we talked about earlier with extracurriculars, it definitely is another thing that gets me out of the room. Something that's great about both of us is that we each have like hobbies and or extracurriculars that cause us to like not be in the room. So then a lot of the time we get alone time in our own room, even mm. though it's a double room. Something that I do think about is, yes, I'm in a sorority, but how can I maintain that strong relationship with my roommate who's not in my sorority? So that's definitely something you want to consider. If you guys both plan on rushing, what happens if you end up in different sororities? How will you navigate that? Do you choose to stay friends? Do you, I mean, I would hope you choose to stay friends, but, <laughs> yeah. or what do you do? Like if your roommate doesn't rush, like how do you stay close to them? So that's or definitely if you something. Are in the same sorority. Yeah. Like, that's a whole nother thing. Mm hmm That's true, but. yeah. Unfortunately, this year we had to do Rush virtually, so I was in fact doing it from the room. It's like, from an outsider's perspective, it's probably a little annoying <laughs> to hear me, like, have the same conversations over and over again. It was kind of interesting to listen to, because, like, it also was important that, like, I didn't rush at all. Like, I didn't rush and then choose not to be in a sorority. I just didn't even start with it, so it was just kind of funny to listen to. <laughs> <laughs> Next up is sleep style and preferences. So. To me, one of the most important like features of the room is for it to be 
a quiet space to sleep when we need it to be because that is honestly the thing that we need the most as college students is our sleep so i know that when me and maddie chose to room together something we really discussed was how much we value sleep what times of the day we like to sleep and for me i love to like wake up to natural sunlight and we collectively sleep with all the blinds up every night so that we wake up to sunlight in the room but i thought that was really important mm -hmm. what were some things on your mind in terms of sleep when we chose to room um I think we haven't had a huge problem with this, but I know people who have, which is like the roommate wakes up or like intentionally takes 8 a.m. classes or something. And then like you have a roommate that goes to bed really early and then a roommate that gets back from whatever really late, like even during the week. Um, and then you also have the same in the morning. So your sleep schedules just don't line up, which can be fine. But if they're really, really off and you have someone who's like a light sleeper, it can get really annoying. So I think just try to be on the same page with that. We also end up keeping each other pretty accountable for sleep, which I think yeah. is nice. Because mm -hmm. we'll like tell each other when the other one needs to go to sleep too. Yeah. <laughs> it was in the fall quarter. I was so, so exhausted. Remember when I like fell asleep doing my work? Yeah. But it was good to know that you were in the room because I naturally woke up from it within like a few minutes, but like you were there to have potentially woken me yeah, up. Yeah, I was that. ready to be like, hello. <laughs> you wake up. A few things you want to keep in mind are how many hours you like to sleep at night. I would say each of us aim for seven or eight at mm. least. Like sleep is very important to me for sure. Although I unfortunately don't really reach seven or eight too often, but it definitely <laughs> is the goal. And if you're a morning person or not, I know I most certainly like to wake up decently early in the morning and it goes along with the sunlight shining in the room. I naturally wake up when there's enough sunlight in the room, so I really enjoyed that. Thankfully, both of us are heavy sleepers. I don't think mm. we talked about this before we roomed, but it ended up just being a beautiful thing. Yeah. Because, as we talked about earlier, since we have a lot of extracurriculars going on, sometimes she will be out super late and I'll go to bed before she even comes back, or I'll be out super late and she'll be sleeping when I come back. I think it also ties along with just consideration for your roommate. It's even if they're already sleeping, like trying your best to be as quiet as possible, like setting out your outfit the day before so you're not like clanking your hangers in the morning or something like that. If you snore, please disclose that information. Mm, good to <laughs> please. know. Please, because your roommate's going to be really mad at you if they like didn't know that and now they're not sleeping or their like sleep is getting interrupted. Like it's not going to be good for anyone. So just close that information. Sleep reminds me of bed. I know something we discussed is like allowing other people to sit on our beds or something like that. I guess it kind of ties well into the next topic which is tidiness. Now, if you're someone who doesn't really want other people to sit on your bed that's something you definitely want to communicate with your roommate before you room with them because inevitably you will have people over in your room and people will like just hop up onto your roommate's bed without asking. As the roommate who is there in the room want to be like wait don't sit on my roommate's bed like you could sit on my bed instead or something like yeah. that. So just little things. Like next up we have tidiness and room decor. So room decor doesn't matter so much, but we thought we'd throw it in there just in case. So our room is colored pink, gray, and white, but let's say Maddie hated the color pink. <laughs> and I really, really like the color pink. I mean, not the biggest deal breaker in the world, but still something you want to think about because when you decorate your room, you want it to reflect who you are. You want it to be a space that you like, that you think is super cute. And if your roommate absolutely hates that, you know, not the yeah. best. You want it to be homey, because like usually your dorm room, at least if you're first year, is going to be kind of crappy. Yeah. And so if you can do whatever you can to make it feel more like a home and comfortable for you, do that. Something super, super important that you want to discuss with your roommate is tidiness, because you might be a super tidy person at home, but in college your life is probably going to be super hectic and you're always going this and there, like you have things to do and your room might become a mess. Something that's worked for us is we do power cleaning every Sunday. Like we'll get the vacuum out, we'll start wiping things down, we do our laundry usually on the weekends. Dishes. Dishes, yeah. If you are someone who like has OCD, you always need it to be super clean, there is no way that you would get along with a roommate who like kind of is a little bit more slobby than you so just identifying like your own messiness level and or how often you clean things and how you feel about your roommate space being messy because ultimately although we live on separate sides of the room we still share the room so if my side of the room was like always super super messy whatever and that was something that maddie wasn't like comfortable with that's yeah. definitely something to discuss before in terms of room decor, um, one of Maddie's selling points was that she already had a mini fridge, which was True. great. She brought that to the table. I, I think mini every fridge. college room should have a mini fridge. Really helpful. Number four, which I also think is super important, is social life and boys and alcohol and drugs. 
it is probably one of the harder conversations you're going to have to have going into a roommate relationship. I feel like everything else is pretty easy. Like, oh, what's your major? What are you interested in? Like, whatever. See if you guys would be like, like each other as people. But this is something that it's a little bit harder to control once you're in college. And you really want to make sure that you have a roommate that like has the same like baseline standards and values as you on these things. Something to consider is if you guys are people who like to go out or if you would rather stay in. And I say this because let's say you are someone who loves to party, you're always out super late at night, but then your roommate likes to stay in and go to bed at 9 p.m. And if that same roommate is someone who's like a light sleeper, they definitely would not be happy with you coming home at like 4 a.m. every single night, potentially waking them up. So having someone who like has similar like going out preferences as you is super important. Also having people over is something that we talked about. We said we're fine with having people over. If we're both there, it's chill as long as neither of us have anything like super important going on but if the mm -hmm. other one isn't there it's just like respect my space and like don't yeah. let people touch my stuff like don't let people like sit on my bed or like stuff like stuff like that i guess yeah. like respect my side of the room and my space even if i'm not there something we talked about was the did we even talk about sex dialing before we room? i don't know i think we just kind of had the mutual understanding that like you would ask first yeah and like make sure that it's really not an inconvenience to your roommate and you want to make sure that you're a roommate and you have a roommate who will be honest if it is a, an inconvenience because otherwise you're gonna not be on the same page and one person's gonna be mad and the other person's not gonna know yeah. why they're mad i truly think that through all of it is like just being honest being honest when you're like i need the room to like just be my space right now and i can't have like a new person in it i want to come home early tonight so like i don't want to be sex aisle like mm -hmm. stuff like that just be communicative open honest communication yeah i definitely agree with that and something that i think has worked well for us but i've seen it not work super well for other people is if you're inviting even if it's just a friend and or boys over like instead of showing up to your roommate already being in the room and being like get out which i've seen happen to other people which sucks trying and working out like scheduling with your roommate and choosing times to have people over that your roommate is not there for one reason or another like for example if maddie has dance practice i am more inclined to have friends over because i know that it doesn't interfere with her schedule it doesn't interfere with her desire to be in the room and things like that being open about your scheduling if you want to have people over talking about it beforehand and being respectful of the space going into alcohol and drugs i know obviously this college like people are doing a lot of things i think you definitely don't want a roommate who's a super messy drunk because you don't want someone who's like constantly blacking out every weekend potentially like throwing up in the room like that's something that you want to avoid generally yeah. same thing with drugs i know some people chose to room with people who are also smokers that they are as well and they do it together but if you are a non-smoker and you hate the smell of smoke and all that stuff do not room with someone who is a heavy smoker just because you like them you think they're super cool ultimately you're going to hate it because your room's gonna smell bad it's always gonna smell like drugs that's probably like a slightly more like difficult conversation to have i guess but being like what like how often do you drink how do you do any drugs what are your thoughts on it like if you do drink are you a responsible drunk like can you handle yourself or like mm -hmm. you definitely don't want to end up like constantly constantly having to like babysit your roommate which sucks yeah I've seen that happen to other people thankfully it doesn't happen to us so it was another good thing that we talked about this leads us to stage five miscellaneous things in this category i would say it's things that we haven't discussed already and it's slightly more niche things that maddie and i chose to discuss before we roomed and or as we've been roommates we've implemented to help like improve our roommate relationship I think one thing that you kind of figure out once you come anyways but like share your location because mm. if someone's like dead lost <laughs> i've had to call a friend like to call me an uber from wherever i was at the time whether like your app isn't working or i don't know maybe you just like had a really crazy night and you need a friend to call an uber for you like share your location just for safety purposes it's also just an easier way to see where they are if they're not like answering mm. their text like i'll be like oh hey where are you but then if she's not answering i'll just look and be like oh she's at dance practice that's why she's not answering because yeah. she's dancing so something like that interestingly enough once you get to college your eating habits are definitely going to change based on whatever it was in high school i feel like in college we are sleep deprived we are more stressed and all these things lead us to kind of want to eat more or maybe less you might be different but having a roommate who has similar eating habits to you and or 
has healthy eating habits that you want to mirror is super important. For us, we, for the most part, eat breakfast, lunch, and dinner, even if it's not together. We're both like on that consistent healthy eating schedule. And we found that a lot of the times we'll be like, oh, I'm hungry for dinner. And she'll be like, I'm hungry for dinner. And then we go together. And always having like your roommate as someone that you could default to is yeah. always having them as like, okay, like I don't really have dinner plans with anyone today. I'm a little hungry. It's too late to make plans. My roommate. Mm -hmm. And it's like the most perfect thing ever. And I think eating meals with people in college is like a great way to like bond with them, like catch up by your day and then also do something productive because you're like getting a meal out of the way. And same thing with snacking. I know moving into college, people are like, no snacks in the room. Like otherwise it's gonna yeah. be midnight snacking all the time. But I think <laughs> me and Maddie have found a healthy balance of like things that we need to keep in the room. We have protein bars in here. We have protein shakes. We have um, frozen food. We both love ice cream that we eat all the time. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of snacks. And I guess this goes along with sharing food or sharing items in general. Yeah. I know we definitely talked about this before we roomed. Both of us were super comfortable with sharing things with each other as long as you're asking first. Like I would never go into her closet and grab a shirt and not tell her about it. And then she would see me out and be like, wait a minute, that's my <laughs> shirt. Like that's super awkward. I definitely thought about this. I wanted a roommate who was a similar size to me. That way we could share clothes if we needed True. to. So it's been helpful. I don't think we share clothes so super often. Maybe that's because I have a ridiculous amount of clothes and I don't need to. <laughs> But um, like it is good to have just in case for sure. Yeah, um, and I know for like dance marathon that happened recently I borrowed some mm -hmm. of your clothes and stuff like that So it's been good to always have like an additional closet that I can reference if I need to But obviously be super respectful of your roommate stuff If you do borrow something let them know take good care of it wash it before you give it back all that stuff Keep yeah. the roommate relationship healthy don't eat their snacks like without asking I know that that's really not a problem for us, but it has been for a lot of other people like, I feel like it's nice like you said, we're really big ice cream people and that's like our bonding time. Yep. Like we both have similar eating habits in general, but also we're like super down to try new things. We get really excited to go to like food based events. Mm -hmm. Like it's really fun to be social and like sit on the floor at midnight and eat ice cream out of the tub with yep. your roommate. Like yep. those are the best. The best bonding moments, nights. yeah. Find one thing that you and your roommate can really connect with. And for us, I would honestly say it's ice cream yeah. that connects us the most is that it's the one thing that you both look forward to doing that you could catch up on and like talk about your day. And I think what made our relationship as roommates really good is that we are different enough to where we're both consistently interested in what the other one is doing. Mm. Because we have slightly different lifestyles, we're interested in different things, we're obviously different majors. There's and that, new happening yeah, all the time. It makes our interactions more worthwhile because there's always like a new story to tell, a new something to catch up about. Yeah. So I think it's good. In choosing a roommate, you definitely want someone who ultimately your main goal is to just find someone who's a compatible living partner to you. I think it worked out great that we ended up being super great friends and that we're super close, but you definitely don't have to be like the bestest of best friends with your roommate as long as you guys are able to respect each other and you find someone with similar like sleeping habits, tidiness habits, and like thoughts about social life, drugs, alcohol, boys, all that stuff. That's probably the baseline. And then everything else is just things you can do and think about to make the stronger roommate relationship and find someone who you love to talk to, find someone who when you come home to them, you feel like, oh, it's, this is my home mm. and stuff like that. Thank you guys so much for watching. And if you guys have any additional questions about picking a roommate and or things that we went through or things that we thought about, please leave us a comment below and or you feel free to DM me on Instagram. I will drop my handle right here. And yes, good luck with your college process. I hope that you were super excited to go to college. We definitely were excited and it has been so amazing so far having a roommate and being able to become close with Maddie. Best of luck. Let us know if you have any questions and yeah, have a great day.